Welcome to Michael Potts F1, everything Formula One, but from a photographer's point of view. Formula One is in the middle of its summer break. This is a time for teams and drivers to down tools and take up baking. This break is a good opportunity for us to reflect on how the season's gone so far. In this series of vlogs, I'd like to take a close look at each of the teams, comparing their two drivers and seeing which one is excelling. I'd like to show you some of the photographs that I've taken during the course of the season and explain why they're important to me. If you're enjoying the summer report into the Formula One teams, please do like and subscribe. It's very helpful for me to grow the channel. After the heartbreak of Abu Dhabi last year, it was expected that Mercedes would bounce back with a new driver lineup of George Russell and Lewis Hamilton. At the Bahrain test, they sent shockwaves through the paddock with a radical new design. Their opponents were up all night trying to find ways to prove that the car was illegal. When they couldn't do that, they tried to convince people that the car was against the spirit of the laws. However, they need not have worried because the Mercedes was awful at the start of the year. Lewis did manage a podium in Bahrain, but that's mainly because the two Red Bull cars had engine issues. The Mercedes suffered from a side effect of the new regulations called porpoising more than any of the other cars. Porpoising is when the aerodynamics force the car into a series of high-speed bounces. It can last the whole length of a straight and looks thoroughly unpleasant for the poor driver. It was terrifying to watch the cars bouncing all over the place, especially at Imola where it's an old track and very bumpy. The cars looked ridiculous going down the main straight. Mercedes have managed to turn things around during the course of the year. While they're still not on the pace of the top two cars, Ferrari and Red Bull, they are making steady progress and they've had a string of very, very solid results. Both cars were on the podium in the last two races, and Lewis has had five podiums in the last five races. There's still a long way to go before the team can win on merit, but if they keep this up, that'll happen before the end of the season. They're now only 30 points behind Ferrari. Head to head, George Russell versus Lewis Hamilton. George is fourth in the standings with 158 points, compared to Lewis, who's sixth on 146. In races they've both finished, George leads seven to three, and in qualifying, he's up seven to six. George was ahead in both of the sprint races, and he has five podiums, all third places, compared to Lewis, who has six podiums, two of which are second places. Both drivers have finished 12 times in the points out of a possible 13, and George has the team's only pole position. Lewis Hamilton. Hamilton took some time away from the media spotlight at the end of Abu Dhabi, and he seems to have come back a lot more refreshed. While he doesn't have the car to fight for the world title, he is taking on the challenge of getting Mercedes back to the top with both hands. His last five races were brilliant. In Hungary, he came from down the grid to finish second, which is a very strong result. The first shot of Lewis I'd like to show you is an overhead shot from Imola. I took this from the tower at the end of the pit lane. The reason I find this shot interesting, it shows how tightly packed the Mercedes is. It's got a much smaller body compared to the other cars. You can see so much of the dark floor. To emphasize that point, here is a comparison between the Mercedes and the Aston Martin. Generally speaking, in motor racing, smaller is better. If Mercedes can get this concept right, they could potentially be unstoppable. The second image I'd like to show you is of Lewis arriving in Monaco. He had just arrived by boat, and he was busy walking towards his garage. Firstly, there's not many photographers around. He's not being harassed by the media or by fans. He's looking very relaxed, very happy. And at times in the past, that side of Lewis has been missing a bit. It's great to see it back. He's wearing another fabulous outfit. He's always wearing something special when he's arriving at the track. This particular one is from designer Giacomus and he's wearing his own branded Lewis Hamilton police sunglasses. I think Lewis is getting back to the top of his game. He has a desire to win that eighth title. This year is all about building. It's all about getting the Mercedes closer to Red Bull and Ferrari. George Russell. So far this season, the young British driver has outperformed his more experienced teammate quite handsomely. In many ways, it was probably quite a good time for him to join the team. Had the Mercedes been better, and had Lewis been in a title fight with Max Verstappen, it would be possible that George would have been relegated to being a second driver, as we saw with Valtteri Bottas. Once that happens to a driver, it's very hard for them to gain the confidence to be a team leader again. The pressure has been off the season, and that's allowed George to establish himself within the team. He's also had some brilliant results. The first shot is of George after getting pole position in Hungary. This was an immense result. While he did benefit from troubles at Red Bull, he wasn't in the fastest car. One of the great things about being a Formula 1 photographer is we get to stand really close to the drivers once they finish qualifying in the race. And while the TV cameras are focusing on who's being interviewed or something else that's happening, we get to photograph these quieter, softer, more human moments where a driver's reflecting on his achievement. In this photograph, I think you see a little bit about what this result means to him. And hopefully this is something I can show you that you might not necessarily see on TV. The second shot is from Silverstone. This was just after the massive crash at the start. George's car had been damaged, 
But Zhou Guan Yu was in a much more critical situation. George jumped out of his car and ran over to where the Alpha had been trapped behind the tyre barrier. He climbed onto the tyre wall and frantically beckoned for marshals and paramedics to come and help. This act of compassion cost him the chance to rejoin the race. Because he left his vehicle and crossed the track, he was not allowed to continue racing. But at that point, the only thing that mattered to him was to make sure his fellow driver was okay. Thank you for watching my review of the Mercedes team midway through the 2022 season. With Mercedes only 30 points behind Ferrari, and the car improving radically over the course of the year, do you think they have a good chance of taking second place away from Ferrari? Do you think the team will record their first win this year? If so, at which track? And more importantly, which driver is more likely to do it? Please do let me know in the comments below. In tomorrow's vlog, we'll discover everything that's been happening at Ferrari. Thank you for watching.